Hey, what's up, my fellow mutants, and welcome back to another episode of Seek at Night, where we are going to open our first Fleer Ultra Wolverine box. So without further ado, I want to get into these. I want to see, you know, what we get in this box, obviously. I want to share that with you guys, and I want to thank you all for being here. So if you're collecting these, let me know down below which cards you're looking for, if you're looking for any. Uh, these are 12 packs in a box and six cards per pack, just like we had with the Midnight Suns. And uh, yeah, this is awesome pop art that they do, jambalayas, adamantium cards. Like there's a little bit of everything in here and I'm excited to see what we get. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our first pack. And forgive me, I may take my time looking at these because like I said, I didn't watch too many other videos. So some of these cards may genuinely be my first time seeing them. And just after, especially after doing the Midnight Suns one, the artwork. I want to sit and stare at the artwork for a minute too and kind of take it in. So I'll do my best. Hopefully this isn't a, a too long of a video. I'll try to keep it under half hour if I can. So uh, famous last words. Hey, look at that. Oh, and that's right. They do these silver claw marks in the background um, so you know it's a base card and then they change the colors. That much I do know. But we got Mirage there. Very awesome. Great character. Colossus. Celos. What's up? Oh, he looks great. That's awesome. I can't wait. I hope he's in Deadpool and Wolverine. He was kind of the, the you know, uh, straight man to the comedy relief of Deadpool in the first two Deadpool movies, but I still hope we see him in the next one, and I hope we see a fastball special. I would love to see him throw Wolverine, uh, you know, Hugh Jackman, like across a yard of enemies. Whoa! Hey, look at this. Aliases. This is when Wolverine was a horseman of Apocalypse, and he was Death, um, which also happened to Gambit. Uh, so spoiler alert, um, a 11, a, that's our lucky number too. That is really cool alias and it's black and white, which you guys know I'm a sucker for. So I don't know whose decision. I don't know if they're all in black and white, the aliases ones, but this one is, and that puts it at the top of my list of my favorite card so far. Um, very cool. Hey, look at toad. Wait, is that Humberto Ramos art? Do they list the artists on this one? Because, uh, I don't think they, I mean, they did in midnight suns, which was really great, but I don't think so. Whose art is that, though? Maybe it's not Ramos. It kind of has his style, though. Um, yeah, that's cool. It looks it looks neat. It's a good shot of him, but yeah. All right, so we got our first medallion. We got our first team affiliations, which is Wolverine and the X-Force. Great comic book series, especially the Uncanny X-Force one that Rick Remender did after this. So this was good, too. This was Chris Yost and everything. He's an amazing, amazing writer. Big fan of his. Um, so this is a good run, and then Uncanny X-Force after was also a good run. Um, and then who do we have at the end here? Oh, Domino. Dude, that's a great shot of her. She looks fantastic. She looks wicked in the Midnight Sun series. <laughs> She's got like a like a Joker face and stuff. She looks awesome. Um, awesome. Okay, so pack number two. Let's do this. And as always, we'll square them up. These are really thick cards. They are awesome, man. Detail on these is so great. And the art is fantastic. Look at Strife here. He looks awesome. He looks like Super Shredder <laughs> and also the Michael Bay Shredder, like combined. Um, but that's cool. He's supposed to be intimidating. He's an evil cable. He should be intimidating, I think. Hey, dude, Onslaught. Speaking of spoilers, looks like we're getting a little precursor of season two of X-Men 97, maybe. Um, that's great, though. He looks fantastic. He's covering up the claw marks, but I kind of like that. I don't, I don't know if I like the claw marks on every card, but I get that it's a signature design thing. Um, but, uh, but I think there's some cards that piece together and then the claw marks interrupt that art in a way. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm withhold my judgment until I see it. Dude, I'm not kidding. I had heard this card was in the set and I saw a picture of it, I think on Instagram, but I quickly try to look away, but I was really happy. This, I really wanted to get this team affiliation card. Of all the team affiliations, I was like, this and maybe Alpha Flight would be cool too, but this is really awesome. When these four became the new Fantastic Four, when the original Fantastic Four went missing, and they were only gone for like two issues or one issue, it was really quick, but these guys banded together and made the new Fantastic Four. So we got Spider-Man, we got Danny Ketch Ghost Rider, we got Joe Fix-It uh, Hulk, and we got uh, Wolverine here, obviously. So just great. I'm so happy. I'm going to put that aside with the medallion. Hey, and we got a Jubilee medallion. That's a great shot of her, actually. I like that artwork a lot. She's got a fun design. I, I, you know, I see people redesign her sometimes, and I'm like, why? She's so fun with the design she has. 
it's very like youthful, but like very 90s too. Uh, so I understand maybe moder modernizing it a bit, but just she's so fun looking. She stands out in a crowd. And I feel like with a character like Jubilee that some people find annoying and don't like, yeah, I feel like having her visually look this way is nice because then she stands out, especially on a team dynamic when you have the whole team lined up. You're like, oh, what's her deal? Why is she dressed like, you know, that? <laughs> and so, yeah, I think she's cool, though. And I like that art. That art's amazing. Um, red Skull and the Green. This would be a cool one to get in red. But if I'm not mistaken, because we got a red card in the last box of Midnight Suns, I think the reds are autographs. So if we did get a red of this, it would look cool, but it would look cooler because it would have the autograph on it. But yeah, this is from, look, Old Man Logan, where... Red Skull was the president of the United States. So yeah, fun book. You should read it. Oh my goodness, Sabretooth. Dude, I'm so glad we got him too. That's great. I don't know how many base cards, you know, towards the full set we'll get in this box, but I'll see how many we have, like, you know, later on after off, off filming. I'll count them up and we'll see what we got. And, um, and that'll decide if we get one more box of these or if we just go straight to the blaster boxes. So we'll see. All right, Emma Frost. Very cool. Cyclops. Dude, I'm so glad, you know, we have a friend named Justin, uh, not Spidey Hits, but a, a different Justin, who is just a Cyclops collector and has been, and has been his favorite character since he was a kid. And I'm so glad a fan like him is getting so rewarded with like X-Men 97 and how cool Cyclops is in that in that whole show. Um, flaws and all, because there's moments where he's like, you know, emotionally flawed, but you can understand why based on what he's going through. So I think they do a really good job of making him a great character, which Cyclops is. So it's uh, I'm glad there's a lot more fans of him, you know. Now it's it's great, and so hopefully Justin's happy seeing all you know more Cyclops fans popping up. So this is an insert set X23 that focuses on her, I believe, which is really cool. Laura is an awesome character, and I know there's been rumors about her maybe being in the new Wolverine and Deadpool, but. Who knows? Rumors are rumors, right? I, I never go off of rumors. I always wait for, you know, to see the movie or see something official. Um, but look at this, a blue juggernaut. That'd be another character to be, you know, getting red would be cool. But again, it would have an autograph on it. But yeah, he looks great. I love Kane Marco. He's a great character. Oh, and this one is numbered. So out of 181, 150 out of 181. Okay. Sweet. All right, we'll tuck him aside. What does that mean? The, the red skull was number two? No, he was a green. Yeah, no, he, he was green. So blue, okay. And then, oh, we got another green here. We got Mariko Yoshida, which I believe is uh, related to the Silver Samurai. I believe she is, yeah. Um, the daughter of Lord Shingun of the ancient clan of Yoshida. Yeah, yeah. So they're all tied to that family tree of, uh, of the Silver Samurai and all that. So very cool. And hey, dude, a different saber tooth. Yeah, I think there's a couple Wolverines and a couple Sabretooths in the set, kind of like how Midnight Suns had a few Ghost Riders, and I'm A-OK -okay with that, for sure. <laughs> More of that, please. Um, all right, so next pack. I can already see a Weapon X, which is great. All right, square them up. Oh, and we got Marika, or Mariko Yoshida right there in the base. Oh, and Aurora. That's really cool. She looks great. Does she combine with, like, North Star or something? That would be awesome. Alpha Flight's one of those underrated Marvel teams, I feel. Like, I, I at least that's how I feel about them, at least. Please say you didn't get damage. Okay, you're good. Um, hey, aliases, mutate. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, this is awesome. So these are like just different worlds or different versions or different aliases, right, that Wolverine has gone by um, over the years or how, how he's been branded by other organizations like Weapon X and stuff like that, so... Yeah, very cool. And he just got a shot of our medallion, which is Archangel. And this is the version of him from Uncanny Avengers, Uncanny X-Force, I mean, when he was um, kind of the reincarnation of Apocalypse in a way. He had like the Death Seed and all that stuff, and he had his own horsemen. So, uh, yeah, really cool. Yep, that's awesome. I'll put him over here with the other ones. We got team affiliations. This is Jim Lee artwork. That's awesome. That's awesome that they put Jim's stuff in here. That looks so good. Classic cover, too, number 275. Jim Lee has drawn the number one selling comic book of all time, and that is X-Men number one. 
which was written by Chris Claremont. It came out in the early 90s, and it was a rebranding after this. So everyone was like, dude, Jim's art on this Uncanny X-Men book is so great. Let's create a new book just for him. Just like Todd McFarlane was drawing Amazing Spider-Man and created Venom, they were like, we need him to have his own book. It didn't work out the same for Todd. Todd ended up going and creating Image, and some of these guys went with him, obviously. But uh, Jim really hit the ground running over at Marvel, doing Punisher stuff and other characters. But then when he took over X-Men number one, that book sold like crazy. It's like eight point something million copies. Never in history has a comic book sold that many copies. And Marvel and other companies desperately try nowadays to inflate those numbers by offering variants and incentives, whereas X-Men number one sold just purely off the artist and the excitement and the, you know, and the enjoyability and entertaining factors of that comic. It sold like crazy. Plus, they also had the advantage of selling in retail, in, like in uh, shopping you know, malls and uh, like bookstores and shopping malls and uh, grocery stores and things like that. So they did have that too, but still, they killer numbers. No one's come close. And then look at this Weapon X shot. That's, that's so awesome. Very cool. All right. Let's keep it going. We're on pack five right now. Squaring them up. And we got Black Tom Cassidy. Awesome. Juggernaut's right hand. Very cool. Hey, we got our friend Matt Murdock. There's Daredevil. Looking sweet. Love that. That's a great shot of him. It's a shame, again, that... Are, do they? Oh, no, we got front art Mark Sasso. So it was maybe it's just the jambalaya. No, no, the medallion, maybe. Just didn't have the name of the artist on it, it looked like. Or I'll look again. I'll, next time, actually, we have another medallion here. Let's see. Do they list... The artist on the medallion, they don't. That's a shame. Um, yeah, that's a shame. Uh, but maybe, maybe it's because they pull it from a specific comic. I don't know. But yeah, that's. I'm glad they at least list them on the back of the regular cards. We got another alias, the first appearance of Wolverine when he was in the Hulk. Um, in those issues of the Hulk, 180, 181 or somewhere around there. Um, so yeah, heads up, Harry's. <laughs> that's cool. Or Harry's. Oh, heads up, Harry's. Gotcha. That's cool. Yeah, he only had six hours or something to bring the Hulk down. Um, oh, look at that juggernaut. That's awesome. And this is the one where he had the additional powers, I think, too. Um, yeah, that's really nice looking. Cool. All right, another medallion. Whoa! Venomized. Uh, real quickly, we'll look at Quentin Quire here. <laughs> well, Because I, I got to stare at this venomized one for a second. Look at that X-23 symbiote venomized. Like... How awesome. She looks wicked. X7. That's fun. Welcome to the Resistance. In a reality where poisons... Yeah, this is from... So we reviewed these books on the Venom vlog, obviously. But this is the story where they had the poisons in it. Which I actually liked the poisons. Especially Poison Spider-Man. And even though he died, I really wished he lived even in an alternate reality. And could have been a threat during these Venomverse storylines. But yeah, they decided not to go that route. But he was cool looking. Poison Spider-Man is really cool looking. Okay, we, oh, we got something weird in there. Something sh It's not even shaped like a card, I don't think. All right, let's see. We'll get there. We got Blink. I love her. She was awesome in Age of Apocalypse um, and beyond, but she's really good in that run too. Hey, Hercules, look at this. That's cool. It's a good shot of him. There's an alternate reality where Wolverine and Hercules are lovers. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe that's another reason they put him in this set because... I know sometimes they pick characters that seem obscure, where you're like, why is this character, like in Midnight Suns had a couple characters, like, why are they in this set? But I get why you want to, you know, shake things up a little bit. Uh, like Domino, I was like, why is she in, or Cable? I understand Cable teamed up with Ghost Rider once, but I think that was the connection. I think Domino did a storyline too, where she was teaming up with some supernatural characters, but still, it's like not something you think of off the top of your head. Um, but Hercules, I know there's a reality where him and Logan, you know, were, were together. I think they were married or something. Um, so that could be why they put him in the set. Dude, look at that. Great comic book, Wolverine versus Spider-Man, where they team up, well, kind of, they fight each other too, but they fight Hobgoblin. And it ties into the Ned Lead stuff and all that. It's it's really cool. Really cool comic. I'm so blown away that we got this. So Spider-Man versus Wolverine. That's so awesome. And that's a great, yeah, I'm putting that aside. I got to put that aside. 
All right, then we got Cassandra Nova. I'm going to go backwards because I want to find out what that card is, but I'm going to make us all sweat it. Uh, Cassandra Nova, cool. And yeah, she's uh, kind of pictured and portrayed as older because she's supposed to be Xavier's age. But in the new movie coming out, I think on that alternate reality, it's a younger version of Cassandra. So we'll have to see what the storyline is for that one and why she's younger. Or if they even mention it, they probably won't even mention it. Um, and then we have here Wolverine, green parallel with his X-Force suit on, the darker colors, which is awesome. And then you are not going to believe this card we got. So it is shaped like a card. I thought it wasn't the way it was sticking out. Look at this. Look at that face. He's like so happy that he ate somebody or killed someone. Like how amazing. So so that's what it is. These, yeah, these pop out kind of like the, the, the ones from the Midnight Suns. The, like the art kind of sticks out a little bit. But this is EX81. Wolverine aimed to claw Sabretooth's throat, really? With the first strike? Logan had to warn him up or warm him up first. So we got a Sabretooth EX card. And I think I heard someone say these might be one a box. So the fact that we got Sabretooth of all the characters that they probably because they probably have what, like 20 or so, or maybe more. It says 81. So maybe that's card 81, and then it's just like the, a variant of it or something. I don't know. But they, uh, I mean, who knows how many there are, but to get Sabretooth, like a main character, is to me, is awesome. Like, you know, we didn't get like a, you know, like a Quentin Choir one or something. Like they did they did Sabretooth, and he looks awesome. So I'm glad. That's I'm so happy to have that. Uh, Polaris, cool shot. I don't know about the hair. I mean, she kind of gave her Wolverine hair. Uh, but I understand. I, mean, I think that was a design at one point. But I like her with the long straight hair. She looks better that way. Um, Mystique. Look at that with the morphing. Oh, I like how the artist did all this. That's cool. Team affiliations. New Avengers. Uh, there was a lot of hubbub, I think, when this book came out. My friend Gene will tell me. He'll fill me in on like the the reaction online and with fans from books that you know came out. When you know when I, in the timeline, I don't remember like aneur, you know pre aneurysm and everything. So like he told me all about when Wolverine and Spider Man joined the New Avengers. There were people that long term fans that hated it, and there were people that were you know it brought but it brought in a lot of new fans. And to me, I, you know, I think that was Bendis trying to treat the Avengers like the Justice League, where he's like we should have all the best characters. And I I kind of I don't like Bendis's writing a lot, but I don't disagree with that approach on some levels. Um, but now the Avengers, the, you know, the movies have turned that around and made Captain America, Iron Man, all the classic characters, Hulk and Thor and Black Widow, made them the forefront again. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, oh, what the what? The what? Uh, oh, this is the, the three by three. So I'm not a big fan of this. They did like this big single image with just, you know, three characters fighting. I know that's supposed to replicate the cover of Hulk number one. Or not Hulk number one, but the Hulk issue where Wolverine first appeared. So Wolverine's first appearance. So I get that it's trying to recreate that battle, and it's you know it's great artwork overall. Um, but I'm I'm just not a big fan, uh, you know, of the the style of it. It is foily and stuff, but just I don't know. Even the image a little bit. Even though Hildebrandt is a classic and amazing artist, I'm not trying to say their art is bad. It's just like this image doesn't jump out at me. So if anyone out there is trying to complete the three by three and you don't have Hulk's abs. Yeah, it looks like Hulk's abs. If you don't have that, let me know and we'll figure something out. Hey, we got a green. That's cool to get in green, to get blink in green. That's awesome. Yeah, and you got to really let the light hit that, huh? Don't you? See that green. Um, very cool. And then we got magic, dude. Yeah, another character that Spidey Hits loves. Great character, though. I'm, I'm in love with her. She uh, she was on my team when I played Midnight Suns, and you had to pick your own team. Um, she, you know, magic was definitely on my team. And actually, my main character that I created... I had them become best friends because you couldn't really like fall in love. You, you know, it, was, it wasn't like Mass Effect where you can create a love story between your characters or Baldur's Gate, but you could create a deep friendship. And so, uh, um, so I created a deep friendship with Magic because I was like, yeah, I feel like my main character would probably hang out with Magic a lot uh, because they were similar. You know, they both been to hell and they had similar backgrounds. Um, oh, so we got Yukio. That's a great shot of her. Very cool. She's about to, like, kick someone right in the chest. 
Whoa, look at that. Dude, look at that Weapon X shot. I have not seen that one. That's fantastic. He looks savage, dude. I love that. Big fan of that artwork for sure. <gasps> no way. Cap versus Wolverine. Dude, these battle cards we've been getting are awesome. We got Spidey and now Captain America. Dude, I'm so happy. <gasps> no. Whoa, dude. Gambit in the Ultra Abilities. He looks fantastic. He looks fantastic. I, I got I to gotta sleeve this. We'll probably top load this later too. But man, oh man, like that is beautiful. Remy, you look fantastic. R.I.P. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't worry. He'll, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that'll change. Oh, hey, this is Wolverine, uh, Wolverine, I think, alias uh, from the set. Uh, but Wolverine, yeah, uh, that's cool. That's neat that they, that's an obscure reference they put in there. That's cool. And then we got, oh, Jean Grey. Hey, my friend Evie, if you're watching, we got a Jean Grey here. That's so cool. She's my only one, though, I think. So if I get a second one and you need one, I'll send it to you. But I'm pretty sure at this point you probably have that card, most likely. Um, all right. Oh, we got, a, we got a Dark Phoenix back there. Okay. Hey, Old Man Hawkeye. I really liked this book, by the way. Old Man Logan is a fantastic book, but the prequel, Old Man Hawkeye, is also a great book. So if you haven't read it yet, please do. It's, it's really cool. It expands on the world of Old Man Logan, and it's got some great cameos in it. Dude, we got the professor. He looks, that's a great shot of him. Yeah, he looks very intense. Um, hey, we got the Avengers Unity Division. And that's from Uncanny Avengers. Awesome. Dude, Banshee. Oh, this is Apocalypse Banshee, though, I think. Um, yeah, because look at his face and stuff. That is cool. That's a cool Banshee on the medallion. Uh, can it Irish? Oh, there's some great quotes from from their run in the comics. That's cool though. I like the the design they went uh, with, and I'm blanking on that artist's name. God dang, I'm blanking on it. But, um, yeah, did some great stuff. Oh, we got who's this? Jim Logan, aliases. Okay, is he from? That's not the noir Wolverine, is it? Detective Jim Logan. I feel like this is from the noir Wolverine book. Um, maybe. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Look at that, though. Evie, two in a row. We get last pack ended with Gene. This pack ends with Dark Phoenix. How awesome. Um, and for you Moon Knight fans, there was a storyline where the Phoenix Force, like, possessed Moon Knight for a while called The Age of Khonshu. Not a lot of people's favorite. Not really one of my favorite stories either, but still a kind of a neat concept. Um, all right, we got Black Queen. Three packs left, by the way. We have Thunderbird. Wow, that's a great shot of him too. Could you? I mean, that's so cool. Like these artists, it's like it's like actors playing roles for movies. Like you get an artist, and some artists would be like, "Oh, I got to draw Thunderbird." Like, who is that? You know, like they might not know him. I mean, I know him. I'm a comic fan, but some might not, and they'll be like, "Who is that?" And um, and then they do this, you know. And I don't know. Maybe this artist knew who he was and picked him. It's like, hey, I want to do Thunderbird. Sometimes you know, artists get that choice. If they're, if they're able to get their choice in on time, um, they can pick their characters on these sets. And who knows, maybe someone's like, dude, I really want to do Thunderbird. I want to do him justice. Well, you did. Or if you didn't know who he was, you still did him justice. This is, that's a beautiful piece there. That's really nice. Another alias, we got Prisoner 412075. That's right. Okay. Yeah, Wolverine's had a lot of names, including, you know, uh, numbers, uh, prisoner numbers. <gasps> Whoa! Dude, Midnight Suns autograph, now Wolverine autograph on a mojo. And look how creepy he looks. What's the artist's name? 18 out of 74 autographed by J.P. Tar, Tar, Target? Tar, Target? I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I really feel bad because to own... Your autograph on a great piece of art. Like, look at that mojo. He is creepy as hell looking, dude. That's awesome. And that's pretty much where that pack was in the Midnight Suns box. It was near the bottom, but we shuffled them 
and it got it put on the top. But dude, an autograph with two boxes today and two autographs from Fleer Ultra. Like, I'm I'm very lucky and grateful. That is awesome. Um, dude, that's great. I'm very happy with that. That's cool looking. All right. And then lastly, we have a green rogue, another great character to get in green. Like Blink was awesome in green, but to get rogue in green or yellow would have been awesome too. And another saber tooth. This is another different one, I think. Look how awesome he looks, man. Dude, okay. I'm so happy. All right, well, two packs left. And like I said, I'm not going to ask for any magic because we just got an autograph. And we've got a lot of great cards in this. We got the Gambit Ultra Abilities. Like, I'm super happy right now. Ooh, look at that blob. That's a great shot of him. Wait, did this square up? Okay, good. Um, yeah, he looks fantastic there. Look at that. Archangel, classic Archangel too. That's awesome looking. Not classic Angel, classic Archangel. This is like from the, what is it, um, X Factor days and stuff. A little, little bit after that. Oh, there's the NYX X23 shot. That's a great image. Um, yeah, that's cool looking. Pretty iconic cover for that character. That's card number one of her set, her subset. Silver Samurai in the medallion. Okay, awesome. Looks like it was pulled from a comic book image panel, probably. So I'll put him over here. We got Greatest Battles, the Wolverine versus the X-Men. You gotta be kidding me. They made this into a card. So for those of you who are looking at this and going, I don't understand, he's not fighting the X-Men. He's fighting Strife and Sabretooth. And, um, oh, I, I forgot his name. He's from, he was in a Carnage comic book too. Um, but I know you're like, where are the X-Men? I don't understand. That makes this card so dark because he actually is fighting the X-Men. It's just in Old Man Logan, Mysterio enhances his powers somehow and makes Wolverine think he broke into the mansion to kill the villains. And it was all an illusion. And Wolverine actually killed all the X-Men. Pretty dark. And then there was this moment where after he did that, in his grief, because he killed everyone. Jubilee, Gambit, Xavier, Jean Grey, everybody. Killed all of them. And Storm, like everyone. And then he goes out to the tr a train tracks and he puts his head down on the train tracks and waits for the train to come run him over. And the train does, but because he's made of adamantium, it goes right through his skin, obviously. But the train bounces off of his skull, the wheels and stuff, and derails the train. And then all the humans and all the people on the train get killed while he's trying in, in his attempt to kill himself. And he just wasn't thinking because he was, you know, grief struck. So just, wow. I can't believe they made this a card and they didn't put the X-Men on it. They put the villains on it purely for people who would know that that's not actually the villains he's cutting apart right there. Yeah, because there's Dr. Octopus's arms and stuff. And we got that in a green parallel. Wow. That's some dark, that's a dark card. Uh, and Ultimate Wolverine. Very cool. Who they hinted at him having a relationship with Ultimate Colossus. I know I'm, earlier I mentioned the uh, Hercules thing, but there was some strong hints from Mark Millar that Wolverine and Colossus in the Ultimate Universe hooked up. I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but the the subtext was there, I guess. Um, okay, last pack we got Namor. Really cool shot of him. Oh, I like the sharks with laser beam eyes. I'm just kidding, dude. Look at that Captain America. That's fantastic. I'm a fan of that. Wolverine battles. Wolverine versus Cyclops. Dude, if we were going to get another battle in this, we got Spider-Man. We got Captain America. We got the X-Men. Dark card, by the way, again. And Wolverine versus Cyclops. Pretty iconic. And what's the... <gasps> no way! Venom in the pop culture art. How funny. How funny. Normally with these inserts, I'll get a character that like I'm not a big fan of. Like Mojo, I'm not a huge fan of him, but I love that artwork. So to get that with a signature is amazing because the artwork is really amazing. Um, but to get an insert card with Venom in it is just very serendipitous in a way. Like it's just, I love 
this character and have grown to love him even more through Tom Hardy's kind of portrayal of the character, but also like a lot of the writing that's been done to the character over the years too, and following him and studying him and, you know, dissecting him in a lot of ways, uh, you know, through our show, The Venom Vlog. So this is great. I'm keeping this one. Uh, I'm going to have to top load it or something. That's beautiful. And our last two cards, we got a green parallel of Strife. And we got Psylocke. Look at that little Betsy Braddock action there. So really cool. A lot of great cards in this box. So many. Look at these. They're so thick, too. <laughs> um, we got these great battle cards, uh, except the dark one there. Um, Blue Juggernaut. We got medallions, aliases. Like, there's a lot. We got that, that saber tooth. It's so sick. The gambit. Like, we did really well, I feel, in this box. A Symbiote X-23. I mean, the team affiliations of the, you know with Ghost Rider in it. We got the Venom pop culture. We got the battles between Captain America and Spider-Man. And yeah, we got this, which I'm not a huge fan of. So if anyone out there is trying to collect this or finish this, let me know. We can talk. Um, but for the rest of these, I'm really happy with this box. And to get this Mojo autograph on top of everything, to have an autograph in both of the boxes we opened today, we are very lucky and I'm very grateful. So thank you all for watching the episode. I really do appreciate it. Let me know down below what you think of these cards. And if you want to see me open more, I'll look and see how many base cards we have. If we only have half the set, we might buy a second box. But then after that, we're only going to stick to the blaster packs, um, which you can get on Upper Deck's website. So I'll put a link to Steel City down below and Upper Deck. Make sure you check them all out. Awesome places to get cards, obviously. Um, and, and as you can see, the cards are top notch and very, very wonderful and beautiful. And sometimes you get lucky and get cool stuff in them and cooler stuff than what's already in them uh so let me know again what you think down below and we'll keep talking as always down there thanks so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace